In this video, I am going to show you how you can how you post items from a cash payments journal. This will help complement uh, transactions in or, I'm sorry uh, exercises in Chapter Nine and beyond um, when you're dealing with a multi, when you're dealing with special journals and you're dealing with a merchandising business. So the first thing you'll see is we have our completed cash payments journal uh, here. You're going to um, do all the transactions correctly and all that stuff. So the first thing that we need to do in our posting uh, is we need to post all the individual amounts to their respective accounts ledgers. So we're really only going to deal with these first three columns here. Uh, we'll just, I'll give you an example on the first two. So the first one, the advertising expense. Um, we're going to post that 125 as a debit to the advertising expense journal. And the process is the similar as how we've posted before. We take the date of the transaction we put two in there. Again, we're not writing September in there because it's already been written when we wrote the balance. Uh, we then take the post reference. So this is coming from CP9. Uh, for this example, we're using cash payments journal page nine, CP9. Previously, uh, if you did this with a general journal, um, in first chapters one through eight, first trimester rather, you would just use nine, but we need to use CP9 so we know that it's cash payments journal. Then you'll see here that that 125 is an actual debit to the advertising expense. So we're gonna put it as a debit into the ledger. You'll see that we have a debit balance and a debit entry, therefore they're the same, and we're gonna find the sum. So we add them up and we get that $9,334.61. We then take uh, the last step in the process then is we need to put our bookmark back into the cash payments journal, as I like to call it, of that 6105, and we put that there. You will then, uh, repeat this process. So for you, you would do it for Henson Audio and the magic of technology. I just did it real quickly here. You can see where I got those numbers by looking back at the previous one there. Um, and then what I need to do then is I need to put my bookmark on my 220. You'll complete this process and continue this process all the way through for utilities, expense, Peterson Electronics, supply store purchases, all the way down to cash short and open. Once that's done, then what you need to do is you actually need to, we're done with the individual amounts. Now we're gonna work more on the column totals. So we're, since we're done with the individual amounts because they've already been posted, uh, we're gonna, now we're gonna go total up every column. And again, this is double checking, making sure our debits equal our credits, our transactions that we recorded were correct and all that type of stuff. Next step in the process of purchase of posting to the cash payments journal is we need to put check marks on the bottom of the general debit and general credit column. And the reason we put the check mark there is because all of those numbers in the, that column have been individually uh, already posted to their respective account. The other thing is, is those that column number is not needed for a uh, controlling ledger, which is what you'll see coming up here in a second. So those don't need to be posted. We put a parentheses V to say, yep, we know they're accurate. We know we're there. We know we don't have to post them. Think of it as like a double dash on a resume. So I'm now going to then post the column total for my accounts payable. I'm moving, again, move, we move left to right. We always move left to right, top to bottom, left to right in accounting. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to be posting this 8557, which as you can see by the account title here is an accounts payable debit. So that 8557 acts as a debit to the accounts payable account. So I'm going to post it. So I take the data that when I totaled it up, and that in this case it was the 30th. I then take the where it came from, my post reference, CP9 for cash payments 9. I take that 8557 as a debit in that journal, and I put it in as a debit in the ledger. Okay. Now you can see here my accounts payable, a little unique situation. I have a credit balance and a debit entry. They are different. Since they are different, I have to, they are, there's a difference and I need to find the difference. So since they're different, I have to find the difference. So I'm going to subtract those two and I'm going to get a credit balance of 1379.48. Why is it a credit balance? Well, first of all, the credit number is larger than the debit number. That's the obvious answer. The bigger answer, if you read it all the way back to your normal balances, accounts payable sits on the right hand side of the accounting equation. Therefore, it sits on the credit side of the accounting equation. Since it sits on the credit side, it should have a normal balance of a credit. 
After I've calculated that balance there, I then need to just go up here. I need to put that parentheses 2110 to know that I have posted that number. There's my bookmark again, if you've been following along here. Um, and again, it has to be in parentheses. If it's not in parentheses, it'll just look like 2110, and that is the wrong column total. That would be wrong and really mess up your books. It needs to be parentheses, that way we know it is posting. Continuing on, and we just continue the process again, right to left. We're now done with the first three columns, as you can see by my bookmarks. I'm going to do the exact same process that I just showed you there by po by purchasing by posting to the purchase discount credit. So this 119.46 that we see here is a credit to the purchase discount account because that's what my account title told me. So I follow the same process. The totals was posted on the 30th. It comes from Cash Payments Journal, page nine. Uh, the 119.46 uh, is a credit. Again, it's a credit because the column total tells me it's a credit because it's column total says purchase discount credit. Again, credit entry, credit balance. They're the same. I'm going to find the sum. I'm going to add them up, ring them up. And then finally, my last step in the process after I create the balance is I'm going to take my 5120, put my bookmark over there and place it as follows. Last step in the posting uh, items found in a cash payments journal is to post the column total for cash credit to the cash ledger. So I'm gonna follow the same process here. This 30 is gonna go here. I'm gonna put my, uh, I'm coming from cash payments journal page nine. I'm going to put that there. I'm gonna take that 11, 775 and 40 cents that is a credit to cash because my column total tells me tells me that it's a credit to cash and then now i have a debit balance and a credit entry they are different so i must find the difference or i must subtract whichever way you want to look at it that way i'm going to subtract now the debit number is larger than the credit number so therefore it's going to be a debit balance also cash is sits on the left hand side of the accounting equation therefore it has a debit balance as a normal balance so it should normally have a, cash should normally have a debit balance. Think, but you can't have a negative cash balance. So I then take that 1043 as a debit. I then now have to just put my last bookmark on there to show everybody in the world that I have completed my posting and my 1110 is there. And that is how you post items found in a cash payments journal. Hope this helps. See you in class. And if you did like this, please feel free to uh, subscribe, like, and comment below. Take care, good luck, see you in class.